Hey gang, Scott Davenport here. I've got an on one photo raw tip for you about masking, how to use the different masking tools together to get some very complex masks done quite easily. Uh, before I show you the technique, the shameless plug, if you're getting into on one, looking for a good resource on one photo raw essentials book, it's available now. You can get a print book on Amazon. I've got ebook on my website. Check the show notes and you'll see all the details. So let's take a look at this photo here. This photo is nearly complete and I want to add one little final accent to this nice swirl and splash of water going across this rock in the foreground. I want to do just a tiny bit of uh, you know, dodging and burning really just to accent this whitewash here and maybe open up these shadows ever so slightly. Uh, a nice way to do that kind of detailed masking is to leverage luminosity masks and then I can use additional tools to really just narrow down on this rock itself. So let's go here. I've got an adjustment uh, in the locals area. Let's change that to lighten. And the very first thing, open up the masking area. I want to start with a luminosity mask. So I'm going to click luminosity. And I'm going to view this mask, okay? Now, viewing the mask, we're seeing a grayscale version of the photo. This is the mask, masking black conceals, white reveals. And so just paying attention to this area here, anywhere I see white means I'm going to have what I apply in these sliders affect those areas. Anything that's dark will not be affected. And so there is this very detailed gradation of brighter whites, you know, some mid grays, some very deep shadows. And so that would give me a very nice natural looking blend of this exposure change that I'm making. Now I don't want this applied everywhere. This is where other masking tools come in. You notice I've been pointing around here. This is my masking brush. I've also got access to my masking bugs. And so the first thing I will do is choose the edges shape. I'll mask away from the edges. As soon as I click in here, I can now just ignore almost all other areas of the photo. I'll just shape this, bring it down a little bit, maybe around there, make it a tiny bit wider so I'm catching the inner circle covering the majority of what I want. And I don't really need a fade, but I'll just leave it uh, kind of there so you can see I could really do a, a gradual fade on this if I really wanted to. But something like that. So I've already eliminated most of the photo from this particular adjustment. And I'll switch back to my brush and bring the opacity of that brush up. I'll switch to paint out mode, make sure I'm in paint out. Uh, I don't need a, that big of a feather. Let's take that feather, make that a little more narrow. And I can just start kind of getting rid of that area there, that area there. The brush the other way, nice and small. Turn on the perfect brush for edge detection so I can get these areas here. I don't need that stuff. And I'm just kind of doing a few series of clicks and drags. And I don't need this to be absolutely perfect, but I do want that whitewash to be removed so that I don't have too much extra brightening on the whitewash that was in that channel. I want it really on the, uh, the edges here. Speaking of edges, that's the other thing I'm going to do is this refine brush. I like to use the blur mask tool. I grab that. Size amounts pretty good. Let's make that brush a little bigger. And just this is to just kind of blur the edge around that mask so it's getting softer. You can see as I let go how smooth that smoothed out those rough edges there on that mask. A few strokes that way, let go, it smooths out. I'll do that a couple of times. And you notice there's a toggle like it changes between a quickie, a quick kind of view and a, and a softer kind of view. That's a speed up mechanism that on one uses. So when you're masking, things are moving pretty, uh, pretty smooth. Okay. Now let's take a uh, turn off that view and just see what I have my effect right now. If I turn off that adjustment, turn it back on, I'm clearly affecting this area here. looks like I need a little cleanup on this edge and this is a little bit too bright. I can always take my exposure back down a little bit, maybe around there, and then fine tune it. I'm gonna go back over to the masking brush, still in paint out, maybe an opacity of halfway, bit of a bigger feather, certainly a bigger brush, and just kind of do some broad sweeps around the outer edge of that. Put the view button, you can see what's going on here. I'm kind of taking this, oh, I forgot to turn off the perfect brush. There we go. I'm kind of taking some of that away. 
That was probably a little too strong. Take that opacity down. Do the same thing again, just to fade this out where I really want the attention is right here. And so now before that change and after. Subtle, yet important. But the key thing here I want you to take away from is you use these masking tools together. You can get a very complicated paint mask without having to do too much complicated tools work. Start with a luminosity mask, because if you click luminosity, it'll obliterate any other mask that you have. So start there. You can use your graduated tools, radial or uh, just a standard gradient, to limit the mask to a certain area of the photo, and then finish it up with the brushes. If you have to, go in that refine tool area to smooth things out. That's the, the kind of the nickel tour of a lot of the masking tools, but used together, you can get a really good result. Hope you found the video useful. Got questions? Drop them in the comments below. And until next time, my name is Scott Davenport. Have fun.